poisoning, spying, hacking, meddling in elections, peddling fake news. To say tensions with Russia are high right now would be an understatement. Our media and our government is making them out to be boogeymen. It is highly likely that Russia was responsible for the act against Sergei and Yulia Skripal. But are they as bad as all that? Well, to find out, we're heading there. Hey, Russia, Putin riding a bear uh, <laughs> with a gun on his back. We'll be finding out what they really think of Britain. Do they like us? Uh, I don't really believe we're enemies. It's, it's just politics. When it comes to average people, we are friends. I grew up in England music, you know, in <laughs> British, and my favorite band was Oasis. And if not, why not? People don't find it offensive to ask you whether all Russian girls are swats and how, how much vodka can you drink. We're starting our journey at a barber shop. Not, unfortunately, to do anything about this, believe it or not, I like it this way, but because here they're seen as the height of Western sophistication. Go back five, ten years and barber shops like this didn't really exist. If you're a bloke and you wanted a haircut, it was a very regimented in, chop, out experience. Now everything's changed. Obviously there's loads of stories in the UK media right now that are negative about Russia, but in terms of culture, you don't think there's a problem? I don't really think so, because if you look into movies, um, into um, music for example, we love it. And in terms of culture, in terms of uh, even business, we, we do take loads of things from the West. Okay, here's our Baba Eugene. Hello, nice to meet you Eugene. Eugene offered to show me the basics of being a barber, and somehow he found a willing guinea pig. Big finger on this section. Okay, I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> you must have been one of the, uh, the first barbers in yes. Russia. Yes, maybe. Uh, now it's one of the most popular profession for the young people. I, I never been in uh, Britain and in, in America, but I think I'm a, I'm a cosmopolite and I uh, like uh, every country. And uh, it's one of my uh, first uh, patients in my life. It's music, and I really liked uh, British music of uh, Britpop. I like Gorillaz. I like Damon Elburn. I like Oasis. It's not so hard. Just. A little bit more practice. Yeah. And, yes. Do you think we're enemies, Russia and the UK? No, I don't think so at all. Um, I spent quite quite a long time in the UK, um, and uh, I just all all the time I want to come back and um, to experience uh, these vibes of, uh, of the country. Uh, I don't really believe we're enemies. It's, it's just politics. When it comes to average people, we are friends. We can go to festival, to a concert, to to cinema, just to enjoy ourselves and uh, share some good moments of our lives. He's going to finish it himself. <laughs> Not a glowing endorsement, is it? Back home, you don't have to look very hard to find negative stories about Russia. There's the public inquiry in 2016 into the death of former Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko. It concluded that his murder was probably approved by Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. Then there's the American media, which has been full of accusations that Russia meddled in its 2016 presidential election. Very strong on the fact that we can't have meddling, we can't have any of that. Not to forget Crimea. It's a bit of land between Russia and Ukraine that's belonged to both countries at different points in history. It had been part of Ukraine for 60 years until four years ago, Russian troops marched in and controversially claimed it back. And of course, there's the poisoning this year in Salisbury of another former Russian spy, Sergei Skripal, his daughter Yulia, and two innocent bystanders. A murder investigation has been launched after a woman who came into contact with the nerve agent Novichok in Wiltshire died. Things like these tend to get noticed by other countries. So, whether it's the enhanced air policing mission the RAF have just spent three months taking part in off the coast of Romania, or a joint UK and US Marines training exercise in Norway, just 100 miles away from the Russian border. 
they tend to be justified in the same way. And deter Russian aggression. Uh, we're here doing the same thing. For seven decades, it lived under communist rule, and it's still trying to adapt to being a capitalist country. And to be honest, it's been a long, hard slog. Whilst here in the capital, Moscow, there are plenty of displays of wealth, even though Russia's got twice as many people as the UK, it's got less cash, much less. Per person, Russia has around a quarter of the money the UK has, and it means people have to be creative to get by. How would you describe what you do? Я называю свое занятие руфинг. Лазаю по крышам или по всяким высоким зданиям и делаю туда фотографии. Я зарабатывал этим деньги довольно продолжительное время. Первый и самый очевидный способ, потому что всегда пишут с воды на крышу. Я какое-то время я водил на крыше за деньги. То есть ты берешь с собой фотографов, либо просто романтиков, водишь их на крыше. Потом я понял, что э, есть такая ниша, как свидание на крыше, и стал устраивать э, свидание. То есть ты просто ставишь стол, стулья, переводишь парочку на час на крышу, они тебе платят деньги. С, э, плюс реклама, потому что рекламодатели, э, ну это скорее за счет соцсетей, потому что э, получаются раскрученные соцсети, и э, рекламодатели как бы и, идут на, на этот контент. What's the closest you've ever come to falling off? Oh, самый страшный был момент. Я был во Львове, это на Украине, и мы лезли на древний костёл. Там был примерно вот такой очень жёсткий уклон, и мы лезли по молнии от воду. И он просто из-за старости здания просто выпал из рук, и мы прокатились по этой крыше метров пять вниз точно, и чудом не улетели вниз, потому что бортиков на старых костёлах нет. So there are things like this all over the world, urban exploring and stuff, but roofing seems to be especially popular in Russia. You guys are like celebrities. Why do you think what you do has captured the imagination of young Russian people so much? Я, я думаю, это э, именно в России он так популярен, потому что э, наше государство, в принципе, И менталитет у людей такой, что на такие нарушения закона, потому что то, что мы делали, это, конечно, нелегально, но за это никто серьезно не наказывал. И плюс, если ты попробуешь залезть куда-то на стройку или на какой-то объект в Европе, то сами жители имеют такой менталитет, что они вызовут охрану, скорее всего, потому что заметят, что происходит что-то не то в России. Всем на все плевать, и пока ты не занимаешься политикой, ты можешь делать все, что угодно. Despite what Kirill says, roofing is a risky way to make a living. Several of his contemporaries have died, and on his point about politics, he spent time in jail when one stunt, which he says he wasn't even involved in, was deemed to be, you guessed it, too political. But as we left, we had our own problems. Getting off the rooftop meant going through Kirill's mate's flat. What's happened, Will? <laughs> a massive snake. Yeah. And I'm not talking about like a small pet snake, a massive boa constrictor has just escaped from the cage, but everyone's just acting like it's the most normal thing in the world. It's living, it's now behind oh, the fridge. It's, it's, it's like we're talking about... <laughs> 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 Did it open the cupboard? <laughs> huh? Just look. Well, it's just like that. Oh my God, it's a in the cupboard. Yeah, no, there's a Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> We're at an ordinary market stall here, so you've got t-shirts, people like Ronaldo, Messi, sporting heroes, Khabib, obviously Russian hero. Um, and just above them, Putin riding a bear. Uh, <laughs> with a gun on his back. Putin, slightly out of date, kicking Barack Obama in the face. It might seem strange, but it's because he's been in power for nearly 20 years. So for a lot of young people, even if they were born slightly before he first came to power, he's all they've ever known. So they see him like a bit of a god. It is odd, there's no doubting it, but the more I stand here, the more I find myself kind of getting taken in by it. Stolte skoyed? A fiver. Bargain. Oh! Oh, 
lad on a chopping board there. I mean, I can't say anyone I know would have a, uh, a <laughs> any Theresa May kitchenware, um, but you know, each each to their own. Hello, we are just outside the, the food hall. So we're going to meet Makar. He's the leader of a group called Set. Um, that's how it translates into English. They call themselves the Poutines because they're young <laughs> teenagers and they love, love, love Vladimir Putin. So we're going to go meet them and see what they think of people like us in the West. And Makar, yeah. Will, just to meet you. Should we get out the road? <laughs> Set is essentially an art collective. Fashion designers, painters, graphic artists can all come use it for free. There's just one condition. Мы поддерживаем Путин, конечно, и человек, когда сюда приходит, да, там куда-то, он, во-первых, видит портрет Путина, говорим о своей позиции, ни от кого ничего не скрываем, говорим, ребята. So if we take one recent example, the poisoning in Salisbury, you must believe that the UK government has done this to, to make Russia look bad? I don't think that it's a plan of the parliament or something. But what I see on the internet or somewhere, it's not similar to the work of professionals. And what is it? The Russian military is always professionals. Всегда. То есть, здесь, на мой взгляд, какая-то происходит адская смесь из fake news. Almost the common sense way to look at it from my perspective is with a lot of these things, so with the Salisbury poisoning, with Ukraine, with how democratic the elections are, most of the rest of the world tends to agree that Russia is in the wrong. So if you were just looking at it as a neutral, do you think it's more likely that the whole world is ganging up on Russia, or do you think it's more likely that things aren't maybe as you've portrayed them? The media, которые создают этот образ, то есть человек реально не присутствует, зритель ваш, например, он реально не присутствует ни на Украине, ни в Солсбери, ни даже в Москве на выборах. Он сидит у телевизора или у компьютера и оттуда берет информацию. Нельзя так формулировать: мир ошибается или там Россия ошибается. Есть гибридная война между СМИ, которую западные СМИ на свою аудиторию, конечно, выигрывают. So if if the problem is that your news says one thing, our news says the other thing, no one wants another cold war. How are Britain and Russia ever gonna <laughs> kiss and make up, I guess? Если кто-то действительно заинтересован, кого действительно прям надо, интересно узнать, там установить истину, человек всегда может приехать. Да, там фанаты, приехавшие на чемпионат мира по футболу, посмотрели на Россию. Во-вторых, он может сравнить информацию. И в-третьих, у всех есть Facebook, он может найти там друзей и спросить у них, попросить фото, видео, там какие-то истории, хотя бы получить от первого лица, проверить информацию, если он действительно. А я делаю юбку, собственно, вот, например, такую вещь. Это карта России. Если заметили, правда без э, Крыма, но когда мы ее делали, это еще не был Крым наш. Где-то мы создавали, допустим, пытались сделать одежду для нашего президента, тем самым сказать, что не только вот он может быть в такой именно классической форме, а как раз может быть э, достаточно э, такой интересной модной истории, допустим, в таком э, ну, фраке. Вот, какой-то может быть такой вот тренчик от плащ. Он душка, он прекрасен. Я очень люблю Путина. Нет, правда, это действительно так. Я его уважаю. Просто в политике я не разбираюсь, но именно как его культ личности, то есть какой он человек, какой у него характер, как он себя подает, как он ведет себя. Это очень здорово, знаете? The God's honest truth, I actually didn't think me and Makar were going to get on that well at all. Someone who loves the powers that be so much that they've started an arts collective to celebrate how great they are. But actually, he's a great guy, he's lovely. I think a lot of his views probably seem quite mad to people outside of Russia, but then he's clearly a rational guy, so I guess a lot of what we believe must seem quite mad to him. A common theme we found here is that people are chatty with you until you bring up politics. But to be honest, when you think about it, it's not really that surprising. 
It's widely believed that all the main TV channels here are under the control of the state, but what we do know for certain is that they're all pro-Vladimir Putin, and protesting can get you thrown in jail. There are elections, but there are usually questions about whether they're rigged. Vladimir Putin! Think votes being found in ballot boxes before the polls have even opened, or CCTV cameras in polling stations being conveniently covered up. Hey, we were watching that. Recently, the main opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, has found himself in and out of jail after being arrested for stuff he says has just been made up to stop him doing his job. So a lot of the rules here are unwritten and quite subtle. So the government would say people have freedom of speech, but at the same time, if you're seen chatting to someone like the BBC in certain parts of the country, you might find yourself, coincidentally of course, getting a visit from the police later on. Despite this, we've come to chat some people who've told us they're not afraid to speak to us. To be completely honest, I think there is a distinction between being afraid and being free. I can't say that I'm afraid because I never was challenged by something to be afraid of, if that makes sense. But I can say that I'm free. There is no political power or political party which I can support, with which views I would agree. I don't think that I'm represented in parliament. I don't think that our government cares about us. And obviously they lie to us. They're always finding someone to blame. It's always West or it is always some people in Russia or it is homosexuals or whatever it is and they never take to blame. So a big story in the UK at the moment is the spy, Sergei Skripal, who was poisoned. Yeah. Do you guys think it's, it's possible that Russia was behind it? I don't really know. I don't like lots of things about our government, but to be completely honest, West wants and needs to, to portray as bad. It's like the war on terrorism. You always need someone bad for yourself in order to distract people from something what happens inside. Loads of people we want to talk to here have said they'll talk to us, but not about politics. Lots of people asked me not to. They were, they were scared about me, like how it might affect me in future. I don't know. I think that who, if not me, and when, if not now, everyone in this country is scared. And as long as everyone is scared, we're gonna be where we are now. There might be consequences, even bad. I don't know what will happen next day or in a week, whether it will touch my family, but giving the idea to like Western public that Russians are not the scariest white people and uh, showing people that we were progressive might make some change. I was living in Scotland like nine months ago and being from Eastern Europe it is hard in the UK. People are stereotyping, people are putting labels on you, people don't find it offensive to ask you whether all Russian girls are swats and how, how much vodka can you drink. So, so far we've spoken to entrepreneurs, people making money through Instagram, quite modern ways of making a living. But these next two are doing things in a much more traditional way. They're part of a genre that's called meme pop and it's absolutely massive here in Russia, but it's yet to make any waves in the West. But do these guys hope that could be about to change? Let's go find out. How would you describe your, your music? A little bit funny, but sad. Something completely different. It's called meme pop, is that right? No, no, <laughs> no we don't like that. Do people call it meme pop? Yeah, some people. <laughs> You guys are, are getting a name for yourself in Russia, but do you, it's kind of this classic thing where people want to break the West and get big in no, America. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, no. 
maybe we want it. <laughs> a little bit. But I think that uh, our music and our lyrics uh, is very connected with Russia and Russian culture. And uh, it's very difficult to understand it without context. Do you think there's a divide then between what works for a UK audience and what works for a Russian audience? Yeah, yeah, I think so. There's obviously a political divide between the UK and Russia right now. Do you think music and culture is one of the ways we might be able to fix that? I think the music is the right way, but maybe it will work and maybe, maybe not. And what about you guys and what you listen to? Is it, is it mainly traditional Russian stuff? No, I, I grew up on England music, you know, in British, and my favourite band in 16 was Oasis, and, uh, you know, it's a very common thing. And I think that's the way uh, the culture is connected by this. So we've chatted to a few people now, but I'm interested to find out how much what they've been telling us is representative of what young people across Russia think as a whole. So we've come to meet a guy from the Levada Centre. Uh, it's basically a big survey company. It might sound a bit dull, but it's interesting because it's one of the few organisations in Russia that's not run by the government that's allowed to ask people what they think. As a whole, how do young people feel about Vladimir Putin and the government in Russia? Half a year ago, my answer would, be, uh, would have been different because uh, just six months ago, young people together with the pensioners were one of the main supporters of Vladimir Putin. But now, uh, somehow, people is, uh, Putin is not so uh, appealing now for young people. Maybe, well, I don't know, because we're only trying to understand it. Maybe because they started to pay more attention on young people. So there were more meeting of young people with Putin, more state attention towards young people, maybe this uh, didn't work well. The opposite well, Yeah, <laughs> pro probably. And what's your research found about young people and their attitudes towards the West? In recent months, we, we saw that uh, more and more young people are becoming, uh, feeling more positive towards the West and there is kind of a widening gap between young people and uh, population. Uh, in general, but uh, I think when it's uh, when the questions are uh, directly about politics, still I think uh, even with the younger people, uh, they will be pro-Russian. Of course, I mean that uh, Russia should uh, not give in, that Russia should go on, Russia should be independent. But uh, if you ask about way of life, uh, if you ask about what countries uh, would we like to take this example from. Emulate. I emulate, yes, it's, um, it's uh, first of all, Western countries. So this is it, our final morning in Russia. We're on our way to the airport now. If I'm honest, before I came here, I did have a slight nervous preconception as to what it might be like, um, probably because of all the negative news stories about Russia that have been kicking around. Now, we've only been in Moscow, so we can't judge the whole country, but it's not been like that at all. Just walking around, it feels like any other city. And to be honest, I feel a bit stupid for having that nervous preconception at all. That being said, after you've been here for a few days, you do sense an undercurrent of fear, I think it's fair to say, among people. So we went to a football match in some of our downtime the other day, we went to see Spartak Moscow, and I've never seen a crowd being so well behaved as they filed out of a stadium in my life. But it's because there were hundreds of army officers lining the street. And in terms of talking to us, even the people who are really keen to talk to us are nervous about it. And some of the people refuse because they're too scared because they say they don't know what the authorities will do to them if they say the wrong thing. In terms of how we can make things between the UK and Russia better, well, most people here seem to say the solution is just to, for us, the normal people, the non-politicians, to meet up and talk and have fun because they say, look at the World Cup. There was so much negative press about how that might go. And actually, it went great. Although, if we're honest, that might not be that easy. So getting permission to film in Russia was a nightmare. Getting permission to come here on holiday is hard. And the vast, vast majority of Russians don't own a passport, so they've never left the country. So as much as they might like to take politics out of it, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm.